I'm Dr. Tracy and we are just coming off of two big holiday weekends, Christmas and New Year's 2022. So I was on call Christmas weekend and Dr. Pat was on call New Year's weekend and we both had to deal with dogs that ate things they weren't supposed to and needed to vomit them up. So this is actually one of our most common after hour calls. So. Um, for all of you that are Marshall Animal Clinic clients, just so you know, when you call the emergency line, you will hit a phone tree and you can choose to talk to the doctor on call. We're not here at the clinic, we're at home, but we'll answer our phone unless we're working on another animal. If you are not a client and you're just watching this to learn how to make your dog vomiting, I would make sure that you know what your options are with your own personal veterinarian, if they're available for you or if they're going to be sending you to an emergency clinic. So. Now to inducing vomiting. <laughs> so the two dogs that I had to induce vomiting on, one of them ate icebreakers gum, and the major ingredient in that is xylitol, and it is very toxic, causes low blood sugar. Um, we've had some tragedies with xylitol gum. I also had a dog Christmas morning that ate 12 dough uncooked dinner rolls. And dough is very dangerous because it expands from the yeast in an animal's stomach can make them very, very sick. Dr. Pat had a dog that ate six sticks of butter. You would think butter would be toxic, but all the fat can lead to pancreatitis. And I can't imagine like the diarrhea that you would have from six sticks of butter. So those were three situations where inducing vomiting was appropriate. So not every toxin or not everything a dog eats should be induced. If it's something toxic that could burn the trachea, burn the mouth, or do more harm coming up than it went going down, we may do other treatments, activated charcoal, stomach lavage, all sorts of things. That's why it's so important you call. You have a couple of options. If you're our client, you're welcome to call us. We'll advise you over the phone. Your other option is there are two poison control lines for animals in the United States. The one that we recommend that we use most commonly is the poison pet hotline. And here's their number. <laughs> and the second one is the ASPCA. I have not personally used the ASPCA. Um, both of them have a fee. The Poison Pet Hotline is a $75 fee per incident. And I don't know what the ASPCA is. So um, you're talking to board certified tox veterinary toxicologists. So it is money well spent. The cool thing is if you call them and you don't know, they actually give you all the information. So if you end up going to a veterinary emergency facility or any veterinarian, they work with that vet. You don't have to pay anything extra to the hotline. So we're pretty comfortable with what we know needs to be vomited up. Xylitol, chocolate, butter in this case, dinner rolls. We don't need to call the poison pet control hotline, but sometimes if it's a weird like lawn fertilizer that may be caustic or some kind of grease or oil or something that we're not familiar with because we don't deal with it every day, we involve them. So the dose, and this is hydrogen peroxide. It's not in a hydrogen peroxide bottle, but we use this to clean up like after surgery. So this is a regular 3% hydrogen peroxide, which I think is the standard that you're going to find on the shelf at a Walmart or a pharmacy. That's what you want to use. You do not want to use anything stronger or you can cause some caustic burning of the esophagus. So here's the dose. This is the important part. It is roughly 5 ml, that's one teaspoon, per five pounds of body weight, with a maximum of, oh my goodness, this syringe doesn't get that big, with a maximum of 45 cc's, which is three tablespoons. I'm going to tell you what, we don't normally use that much. I do small dog, which is five cc's. I do 10 to 15 cc's for a medium dog. And then I'm gonna do two ounces or 30 cc's, um, which is also two tablespoons, excuse me, one ounce, two tablespoons for a big dog. And then if you don't get vomiting in 10 to 15 minutes, you can repeat it and you're still within their whole dose. So that is our favorite. Now I understand not everybody has peroxide on hand and peroxide goes bad. You actually need to throw it out after a year or two. Um, so buy it. It's like two bucks for a container. If you end up pitching it, no big deal. But I understand that in an emergency situation, in a blizzard, like Christmas morning, like 
it was not going to be easy for everyone to get to the clinic this year with the with the snowstorm to induce vomiting with the drugs we have. So if she wouldn't have had peroxide at home, I would have advised salt. Salt is not our first choice. It's our last choice, but sometimes we have to do it. So for salt, and literally I will take table salt and put it in a teaspoon and put a teaspoon on the back of a tongue for a small dog. I'll do two teaspoons for a medium dog and I will do three teaspoons, which is the tablespoon for a large dog. That can also be repeated in 10 to 15 minutes. I also know people that have mixed it in a syringe, made really salty water and squirted it in their mouth. That is an option. Salt is actually toxic. We can have something called salt toxicity. It can really throw off their electrolytes. So we don't do that unless we obviously have to and you don't have peroxide. So some people also have old syrup of Epicac. When I was a kid, that's what um, our parents were told to have in all of our medicine cabinets to make your, us puke when we ate something we weren't supposed to. Um, don't use it in dogs. <laughs> don't use it in cats. Cats. I suppose I should mention cats. Hydrogen peroxide does not work in cats. Salt doesn't work great in cats. Unfortunately, the only things that really work well for cats are veterinary preparations. Here's the deal though. No one called on Christmas or New Year's or Thanksgiving because their cat ate bread dough or something toxic. Like cats are so much smarter than dogs. <laughs> like I'm sorry if you're a dog person, but your two-year-old Labrador is going to eat like medicine off the floor. They're going to eat their bed. They're going to eat your dough off your counter. Like cats, at least my cat, like it won't even drink its water if the dog slobbered in it. They are so fastidious. They're so careful. They have, food has to smell just perfect. I mean, how many cats won't even eat food that's been sitting in their bowl for half a day? So it is extremely rare. I honestly can't remember a time, probably in the last five to 10 years, where I've had to make a cat vomit. They're very smart. Dogs, like every other week, we're making dogs vomit. So if this is not something you're comfortable with or we're really worried about this, we can see your dog on emergency and we can use injectable apomorphine to make your dog vomit. Um, that is an injection in the vein that induces vomiting. And honestly, it's not necessarily more effective than peroxide, but often we have to go to that if peroxide doesn't work. So. The reason we almost always have you try at home instead of saying come in on emergency is because we're in a rural community. Sometimes it can be half an hour before everybody can get to the clinic and that's a half an hour later that that substance is in your pet's stomach. So like in the case of the butter, like they saw it happen. Um, and they, they actually did come in to have it vomiting induced. They lived in town and Dr. Pat was here. Um, I don't know if they tried the peroxide first. But in my case, on Christmas morning, the dog that ate the dough, they had a half hour drive in, I had a half hour drive in, it was a blizzard. Like, so we're almost always gonna have you try the peroxide at home first, knowing that you still may have to come in. So let me just check my notes here. I think I covered everything. Alyssa, can you think of anything, any questions about peroxide? I think so. Dogs vomit? I guess the major take home is don't induce vomiting until you've talked to a vet first to make sure some things you can safely induce vomiting are chocolate, make them puke. Um, if they ate a simple tablet, um, a couple ibuprofens off the floor, um, make them puke. If they ate any kind of chewing gum, make them puke. If they ate bread dough, make them puke. If they ate any kind of food that you're worried is gonna cause a toxicity or a bellyache, maybe they ate an entire pan of blondie brownies. Nothing toxic in there, but oh my gosh, all that sugar, like diarrhea, make them puke. So, all right.